can't map here, uh, we can certainly write some Java code and you can get really complex logic. We do have in-memory sessions that you can manage. Uh, you have memory lookups and mem tables. These are very useful if you're looking at cross-join objects between Salesforce and QuickBooks in your database and you don't want to save it. Uh, you can cache a lot of information. Uh, it's a classical lookup problem that you have that can be solved pretty easily. So we have a lot of those functionalities built in for you. So in this case, we have that and you can run it right off from here or schedule it. Let's look at what happens. Here's my customer data. I'm going to delete this. And then you run it. Once you run it, it would do a couple of things. Actually, it's finished already by the time I went to it. So it just downloaded 32 records from Salesforce into my data structure. So this is, again, very important if you're doing a strategy around master data management or having a single customer database to manage. The same thing can be done back uploading into Salesforce. So you can query databases and upload into your Salesforce. So you have single customer record across and it's all the customer records are synced in. A similar thing can be done with QuickBooks. So let's look at two setups in QuickBooks. So I have another QuickBooks and SQL Server. I've set up the same way. In this case, I already have this QuickBooks linked through Web Connector. Now let's look at what happens. In this case, I will be reading from QuickBooks. Now, if folks who are familiar with databases, you would realize that, hey, this is a SQL-like language. Uh, but QuickBooks really uses XML. We have built a wrapper on top of QuickBooks APIs to have you look at it like a um, SQL. It's very easy to use and do not have to delve into the intricacies of QuickBooks APIs at all. We totally hide it, make it extremely easy for you to do it. So you pretty much write the SQL query on top of it. And here we'll push it to QB invoice. Now let's look at the maps. So here we have a few more. And here, this section is actually what the APIs support from QuickBooks. As you can see, we have a complete hierarchy structure that we can extract information and put it into your data warehouse or your database or your e-commerce application, however you want to do it. So in this case, we'll just extract these information, which is mapped to um, these columns. A real quick run of this. Sorry, wrong one. It is. The other neat thing that we have in our application is as you're building these maps and processes, you can selectively switch on and off certain things. So in this case, we're just exporting the invoice not really ready to uh, import into QuickBooks. So we'll uncheck that and save it. So everything stays there and later on if you want to enable it, work through it, makes it extremely easy. So in this case, let's go back into your database. So we already have a few records from a previous thing. Let me delete everything so that there's nothing left. And make sure this is saved. And then we run this. And then it will get started. Oops, sorry, not this way. It has to be run from 
the web connector. So in this case, QB2 SQL Server is my web connector, and we will run this. There you go. So at this point, it's reading QuickBooks, extracting all the data from QuickBooks, and it's going to push it into the database. It'll take a f couple of minutes. In the meantime, it's 36.59. Looks like it's completed. I'm still doing it. So as you can see, it's you know you're limited by how quickly your QuickBooks can throw your data. If you have a cloud-based database, again we can totally host it. If you have on-premise, you can install it locally and run through it. So let me just make sure there it is. So as you can see, every all the information that we had mapped was brought in. If you have a reporting system in-house or BI tool, this is a very valuable tool to have. The last use case is another very co common one. I thought I would throw it in. Doing integration with e-commerce solution or existing ERP into your QuickBooks or Salesforce. Everything that I'm doing with QuickBooks can be done with Salesforce too. What happens is your e-commerce system has a record of sales, invoices that it generates that needs to be pushed into QuickBooks. A lot of e-commerce solutions have integrations. Some do just a single line item adjustment that they drop in. Some uh, do have some capabilities of pushing the whole thing in. What we have done with this is provide a very easy way to take that set of information and push those in. Uh, here, as sales happen, you have invoice one, little line item one. Again, one with line item two, then another one with th another line item, and then it goes on. So you, we have two invoices uh, in here, with one with three line items and one with two line items. This is a classical, and you can have it in CSV files, databases, any form. You know, a lot of times you get file feeds from your e-commerce solution or external forms that send you however you want, you can have it. We take this extract and we can easily convert this into something meaningful. So let me enable the other one. Save it. Here, again, we're querying the database. But here you would see that we added a simple statement on the top we said, well, these are line items, but the way you should think about is to group this based on these IDs. So we're kind of clubbing a couple of records into one entity. And that's a very simple statement to have. Once you have this, you pretty much can write it to your QuickBooks as an invoice add transaction. And here's the... Here's your mapping. Now you'll see that here's a loop uh, condition that comes in, which says, hey, I'm, you're sending me so many data from your database, but there's actually a looping that is going on because one invoice can, can have multiple line items. So you can quickly do the loops in here, do the rest of the mapping. And once it's done, uh, let's see in here, uh, and we'll sync this up. run this. Oops. Something gone went wrong. Oh, I keep doing this mistake. I need to run it from here. Yeah, QuickBooks doesn't like people calling to into them. It has to initiate the transaction. So QuickBooks Web Connector in this case has to call into DB Sync 
to run the process. It looks like it's done. And let's look like here's two of these invoices that got just created. So you can see, you know, one has three line items and the other one should have two line items. So that's a very common scenario of integrating with e-commerce or your ERP or file feeds and many other sources. So that hopefully gives you some idea about how the integration happens. Uh, the other piece that would be of your interest is, hey, I'm running this, I got an error, how do I start troubleshooting it? So we have a built-in uh, log viewer and it throws a lot of messages. Uh, if everything is fine, it shows fine. If there are severe errors, then it will show severe errors. In this case, there, is. there are none. Uh, you can quickly troubleshoot it uh, using our log viewer on however or whatever the message is. Each error code is tied to on our wiki to an error code and it has solutions around it that we can you can navigate through. Uh, talking about wiki, you can go to a help. There's a lot of literature in there, step-by-step -step guides and tutorials. Uh, you can look at all the tutorials, uh, database to database, Salesforce, and how to do it. Go step by step, learn more about the platform, getting started. Uh, you can get a lot of information uh, from our wiki. And here are all the error codes, so troubleshooting becomes very easy for you to do. With that, I'll jump back and open up a Q&A. Session. Let's see how many questions we have. Okay, we have quite a few questions. 